It's over. The relationship ended. The marriage is no more. African Americans are officially tired of Africa. We packing up our bags and we going home. Or is it Cap? We won! A few days ago, Ashley in Africa posted a video called The Real Reason Americans Are Leaving Africa Is The Honeymoon Over. And for some people that I come across, the answer is yes, but we're going to find out. I want to go over a few of these things in this video to help you as you're on your way to any African country of your choice, especially if it's going to be Uganda. I believe the information that we're going to talk about right now is going to be sufficient. Let's get into it. Number one, people are going back. Number two, um, they've overextended themselves. They can't afford not to be in America. Um, and so they've got to go back. You know, I think when people migrate to the continent or they leave abroad, as we're seeing in record numbers um, more than ever before, I'm not sure if it's new or if social media is giving us these viewpoints, but you come to countries where you find the quality of life so much better, but the cost of living a lot less than what you're used to, and you overextend. You purchase a house or you get an apartment in the most luxurious part of the country. You're dining out every day, multiple times a day. You've got a driver, you know, you're doing all of these things. And while these things can still be relatively affordable, um, what I see for the most part is people just doing the most, like getting the most luxurious car, the most luxurious home, um, you know, the most luxurious furnishings. And essentially, they can't afford to not do the work that they were doing in the U.S. to now sustain the life that they've created um, on the continent. And so, you know, when I first arrived to the continent, I definitely... I wouldn't say made those mistakes. I have lived, had money, lost money, had money, lost it. So I knew how to live pretty frugally. But I do recommend that when you do migrate, that you enjoy that experience for the short, short term. And that's like 30 days, you know, celebrate yourself. Have fantastic dinners out. Stay at a hotel. Stay in a fabulous Airbnb. But if this is something that you want to do long term, you need to get yourself on a budget and be financially responsible so that you don't overextend yourself so that you don't end up having to go back to a country that you so direly want to get out of, right? So. so let me talk about that. People overextend themselves. This is true. And then let me also say this too, especially for some of the men. You know, you can you know, get your young, young lady, start going out. Booty clapping sounds. Yeah, and um, you know, you 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 you're paying for things. You're paying for stuff for people's families now. You start meeting friends, and your friends are poor, and like you think that you're real friends, and you start buying them stuff. People will beg for money a lot, and it doesn't seem like it's a lot. You know, ten thousand you got in shillings is like two dollars and seventy cents, but it adds up, all right? you start over tipping and things like that again if you're coming for a vacation you want to trick it off that's cool but when you're here every day you can't be living all like that and i think we'll do it a lot i know people who make like 15 times less than me that have an apartment like double the price that i have and again you got to understand you need inputs into the business if you're going to be bringing equipment from the united states and invest in employees. You need to make sure that it takes them a certain time to get used to the system. If you're not really rich, you have to really work a lot and you need your money to be there. Anything can happen here, all right? Um, we just got a, a crazy bill for something I wasn't even expecting and luckily we had the money to pay it. So you just don't know. She's completely right about people trying to live it up without having the money to do so. Just because food is cheaper here and workers are cheaper here, it doesn't mean that you are rich. You need, you do need to save your money and you need to be really reinvesting as much as that possible into what you're trying to do. That's number two. 
Number three, sometimes people select the wrong place to live. So, you know, for example, you decided that you wanted to live in a certain place and, um, you know, unfortunately it doesn't work out. It could be, you know, the worst case where you move into an area that probably isn't as safe um, or isn't as welcoming to outsiders because you don't speak the language, you don't practice the culture, you don't understand the customs, and then your experience ends up being horrible. Or it could be the opposite as an example number two, where you overextend yourself and you get into a community that essentially um, you can't afford and you end up having to figure out hustles and ways to do and what what and move around. And you have a bad experience because your main anchor, your neighborhood or the community that you surround yourself with, hint leading into the next topic, isn't the right place, the right people. So going into the next set. All right, let me talk about this, selecting the wrong place. <clears throat> That's true. You can also select the wrong country. So let me, let me, let me tell you what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to hate on Rhonda for an example, but let's say if you want to go to Rhonda, Rhonda is very quiet, very nice. But again, it's not a whole lot of English It's French, but it's great. Okay. But what if you want a more of a lively opportunity for your family? You want malls that have play pens and, and swings and stuff. You might want to consider Kenya. Maybe if you're retired, you might want to consider Rhonda. But if you are in young in business, you're in your 30s, 40s, middle age, you want multiple bigger cities. There's Nairobi, there's you know nearby Thika, Kasumu, Eldoret. You might want to consider that. Or if you know you want something in the middle, something that's burgeoning and growing with a growing population, you might consider Uganda. But if you consider a country, um, and I've heard this too, a lot of people are, are upset with, you know, they're tracing the Gambia because it was just too small and it's not um, a lot of opportunities you want. You could be miserable and that cause you to go back because price is not everything in these countries, right? I love Uganda, I've been here for a while, but if I wasn't in Uganda, I would be, I would be in Kenya, all right? I would be in Uganda and Kenya. South Africa, it's possible. But I wouldn't pick that if it's me based on what I know about Uganda and Kenya. I would be there 100% of the time because of what they offer, the cross trade between the two countries, the similarities in the countries and opportunities. And I'm, I'm, I'm next to Rwanda. You know, we're in the EAC, Tanzania is not too far away. Um, you know, Juba and all that. It's a lot of opportunities for me to do things there. Okay. But if you select a place that is a language barrier, there's not a whole lot of economic opportunity. They don't have a lot of malls. You can find yourself frustrated and wanting to come back. Let's see what her last point is. You surround yourself with a community of people who are not the right people. Mm -hmm. And some of them are gonna be constantly speaking poorly about the experience. And you're also now having a negative experience. So you're feeding negativity back and forth to each other. You're not growing. You're saying the same. And instead of making a change, you're looking outside saying, these are the reasons why these things should change and I shouldn't change. That's a huge reason why people end up leaving the continent. Um, you know, and the last thing. Let me talk about that. Being around negative dances. So that's true in general. I myself can be a negative Nancy too. So I know how that is. Um, but yeah, you know, you have to kind of get over that because there are some things that are going to definitely happen to you here on a content that's not going to make sense. And I can see why a person can become that way, but having a positive mindset and focusing on the people that can't help you here, the people that are great people, the people who are not scammers, the people who are not liars. I mean, I've been able to, 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 to associate myself with a great brand. Um, a great business here, great opportunities. We have a great diaspora community. Um, you know, shout out to Africa Ever After, um, Agaba, you know, DJ Maintain. Um, you know, we have something that's going on here and 
you know, if I was a negative Nancy all the time and, and, and felt negative about people, I don't think, you know, the community would be getting far. So just think about that, you know, keep a positive mindset. There are going to be some days you're literally going to hate where you're at because nobody cares, but always keep that positive attitude, right? No, no, no matter what's going on, because things will get better. Let's continue. Last thing, you don't have the patience to deal with the immigration process. Um, you know, you'll find that depending upon the country that you come to, you can potentially apply for longer term visas in said country. Mm -hmm. Now, do your own research. Immigration rules are changing every day. And so you need to equip yourself with the most updated information that you can find. But the reality is sometimes the things on the website aren't necessarily exactly how it goes down. Back. So it's really important to consult with people on the ground mm -hmm. that have done the work, that have created the relationships that are in the process to be able to support your journey along the way. And if it's not me, if it's other people that are sharing content, sharing the resources, pay them what they ask and do what they say so that you can. Yeah. So, so, so let me get on to that paying people, right? Okay, let's continue. You can achieve the transformation that you're watching them achieve, right? Don't ask people for advice that don't have what you want. But if you're going to ask someone who has what you want for advice, you need to pay them what they ask for and you need to do what they say. That's just my position on that. Um, and so that process takes time. Let me just let me just stop there. So there are a lot of situations that are confusing in the continent and continental countries that if you had a plug of how to do things, it would work quicker. Here's the problem with a lot of the brothers and sisters in the diaspora. She's talking about paying. I don't accept money, but I don't consult, right? I believe that she does, Donita does. But here's what I've, I'm always hearing. Brothers always want to meet up with you and sisters want to meet up with you and they want to ask you questions, but they don't want to pay. I don't know how many emails I've gotten on this channel. Um, people wanting to meet up with me, you know, let's go grab a bite to eat. Like, even if you were to pay me, I wouldn't even do it because I'm so busy. And I'm, I, I really don't want to be meeting somebody from the internet that I don't really know all like that. But the message that I do see when I do see them, is like, oh yeah, let O'Shea know I'll be there. I want to see if I could just come to the podcast. Like, I don't even know you, bro. Like, I, like just be honest. Like, how am I going to bring you to the podcast? Nobody even knows you. You know what I'm saying? And you're not even trying to compensate anybody for anything which is crazy because everybody that's come to Africa as American or black British, we had to pay for everything that we've gotten. So, you know, if you're going to go through somebody that consults, don't be wasting people's time. You know what I'm saying? Nobody has time to be talking to somebody, you know, now if it's information, somebody's giving in the video, that's different. But you know, if you want to get somebody's time one-on-one -on -one, and that person's asking for payment, pay that person. You know, and you don't want to pay that person, but you expect that person to do something for you. That's crazy. Again, I don't do um, booking or consultations. I don't really have the kind of time for that. And I don't want that kind of, I don't, want, I don't want, and I don't want to talk to anybody for real. But I do know people who do do that kind of work in different countries. And I believe that you should pay for that knowledge if you want it. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, Shady Jackson. Back at it again. I want to give Ashley in Africa a big shout out for this particular content piece. Check her out. It's the first company at the top. We're out.